Death is a problem that pretty much everybody by definition has to deal with, right? That one and taxes. In fact, you can evade taxes, but so far at least you cannot evade uh, death. So philosophers have been talking and thinking about death for a long time. I come to that issue from a Stoic perspective. Stoicism is an ancient philosophy, uh, started out in Greece in uh, the third century BCE, eventually became popular and moved to Rome and uh, spread during the Roman Empire. And the Stoics, I think, had an interesting combination of points of view on, on death. On the one hand, they, they adopted what was also Epicurus perspective of it, which is it is not relevant to be afraid of death because, as Epicurus famously said, where you are, she is not, and vice versa, right? In order to be afraid of, you know, the, the, of death as an experience, uh, this, this implies that we are somehow there to actually have that experience. And, and since for the Epicureans as well as the Stoics, we're not there anymore, then there's nothing to worry about. You might worry about how you get there, you know, the last moment before you get there, but, but certainly not what happens afterwards. Now, this is fine um, as far as it goes, but, but it's not enough to have a comprehensive view of death. And I think that the Stoics went significantly further than the Epicureans, and they did go further in a way that it's interesting to today's audiences. For instance, the Stoics very much uh, talked about suicide under certain permissible circumstances. Epictetus referred to suicide as the open door. You know, when, when things really become unendurable, uh, you have the open door. You always have the possibility to, to go out right, and, and finish with things. This may sound like the Stoics had a sort of a casual attitude toward death. They, they did not. Uh, uh, Epictetus immediately uh, added that, you know, this is the last resort. What that does, it, it, it does, that open door offers you a way out. Now, that means that if, you're, if you decide to stay, you work at it hard. You don't, have a, you don't complain about it. It's your choice, right? You're not, you're not going outside. You're not, you're not committing suicide. So now you're in, you decided to engage in the world. Okay, engage in the world. Become you know, the best person that, that you can. Deal with the problems, both your own and societies, in the best way that, that you can. The Stoics did um, admit of suicide under certain circumstances, uh, one of which was, in fact, very relevant to discussion, contemporary discussions about uh, end-of-life um, you know, uh, support. So if you are, in fact, suffering of a terminal disease, uh, as it turns out, apparently Zeno of Citium, the founder of Stoicism, did suffer for a number of years, and he eventually decided to commit suicide. This is something the Stoics have no problem uh, with. They, they think that it's a, it's a way of sort of a, a end your life in a dignified way. There are also, of course, issues of honor. Uh, you know, people like Seneca committed suicide or Cato the Younger committed suicide uh, in order to make a point politically, right? That one is mo probably more framed on, on, on in today's uh, uh, society, particularly because unfortunately we, we have uh, experience in, in the last several years of people who abuse uh, that sort of way out and commit acts of atrocities, uh, not only committing suicide, but bringing uh, with them a lot of people. That's something that the Stoics would not have condoned. It, suicide is a personal thing about you and how you deal with the world and how you relate to the, with the world. You don't bring out other people. So there are those, um, those interesting perspectives that I think are, are still valuable today. But one of the things that lots of people miss about death and suicide, and which was very clear in the Stoics, is that you can use that as uh, that that opportunity, that option, as a contrast with your normal life, and it makes you. And the idea is that it makes you appreciate what you have. You say, well, you know, there is the oblivion over there, and I always have an opportunity, a possibility to go there. In fact, eventually I will have to go there, but there is no hurry. One of my favorite uh, quotes from Epictetus, uh, that of course I, I'm going to mangle a little bit, goes something like this: You know, if I have to die today, I'll die. But if I don't, I'll rather go for lunch because it's lunchtime, right? So it's it's a it's a nice. Uh, it shows, by the way, a sort of a sense of humor that particularly Epictetus had uh, in a number of his sayings. And it's like you know, uh, uh, put things in perspective. One of the, easy, the reasons the Stoics insisted on on practicing constantly sort of mild, self-imposed conditions of harshness. Things like going out in the cold underdressed, or don't eat, you know, starve yourself for a day or two, or something like that, right? They didn't do it because they were masochists. They didn't just, it's not like, oh, I enjoy doing this sort of thing to myself. The idea was you remind yourself of what's good about clothing, of what's good about having food. You enjoy the things that you have much better if occasionally, in a mild, controlled way, you remind yourself that, you know what, I could lose that. Not everybody has that. There's people out there who actually are cold or they actually do go hungry. Um, and I think that death and the possibility of suicide played a similar, of course, much larger role. You enjoy your life, you, you appreciate what you have and your role in, in society much better, uh, and you worry less about 
uh, about what's going to happen if you know that there is this constant possibility of taking the door, the open door is, is always there.